Good morning or good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Encounter with God Together. I'm really happy to have with me today, Tim Black. Tim is the general director of uh, SU South Africa, and they are doing some really remarkable things uh, despite the COVID restrictions in South Africa. Maybe Tim could take a minute or two to, to say that. Uh, he's been in that position for a few years and before that uh, was involved in community development. So I'm, I'm really pleased, Tim, to have you here today. And uh, thank you. No, thanks. Thanks to you, Gail. It's a real treat for me to be able to be with you. Yeah. And I, um, one of the things that, that I was thinking about when I said that is the work that you've been invited to do uh, with schools post, post COVID mm -hmm. uh, in South Africa. And uh, maybe you might say a word about that and how that's going. Sure. Um, program's called Sanawe, which is Zulu for We Are With You. And basically, it's a chaplaincy type program um, to be used in, um, in a local school environment. So we've been invited to work. Um, SU in South Africa is a hun almost 100 years old. And we have quite a long relationship with the schools here in South Africa. And we've, we've been invited by the Department of Basic Education to just bring Sinawe into the schools. So it'll contain some life skills, life orientation. Um, also has um, helping kids deal with trauma and um, psych providing psychosocial support for both uh, the teaching uh, staff and for learners or students. And it's just really a support structure for the schools. It's, uh, we're finding that kids are coming back, their um, trauma and grief levels are off the charts. And so our opportunity to walk into the schools as Sanawe workers and just provide the gospel, you know, we can bring the gospel into the schools and um, just provide an opportunity to actually minister to young people that are in all kinds of different levels of trauma and pain. So, um, yeah, so we've just been quite excited to roll that out. School hasn't started yet this year. Normally it starts in January. Um, and our oh. school year goes from January to November or first part of December. Um, this year it's been because of COVID, we're starting school this week. So the 15th um, on Monday kicks off our schools for the year. So hopefully well, we'll get started. <laughs> thanks, especially for joining us in that, in that busy season. Let me pray for you, Tim, and us as we uh, engage with God's word. Oh, Father, I, I thank you so much for Tim and for the work that you are um, giving Scripture Union South Africa to do in this important area of students and youth and trauma, uh, especially in these days uh, when when we as a as a global community are so um, so touched by COVID and other uh, types of trauma. And so thank you for that. Please bless the students this week as they get started. And please be with Tim now as he uh, gives us a sneak preview of the week ahead. In Jesus name I pray, amen. Amen. Thank you, Gail. You're um, you've given me a really chunky passage of scripture <laughs> to work through. And this is so much fun. And I, I think the book of Mark, as we walk through the book of Mark, is just packed full of action. <laughs> um, it's shot through with action words like suddenly, at once, um, words that just almost make us feel like we're traveling with Jesus. It's all at a breathtaking kind of speed. Um, and we see from Jesus that just God is on the scene. He's flesh and blood. He's moving. He's walking through Palestine. Um, and he's moving through Israel. And it's all very exciting. So I think this is going to be such a fun week. Um, yeah. And I, yeah. So I think what I'd like to do is just kind of drop in like a helicopter <laughs> and we're on a tour this morning and we'll just drop into these five different events um, from chapter six and seven. And then I hope that just sets us up for the week. So everybody That's hang excellent. on. And let's yeah. Get started. <laughs> <laughs> Bird's eye view. Yeah, so our first stop, let's name this one bread. So we'll name each one of the stops and then we'll have a short question that we can kind of think around as well. Okay, um, that sounds so great. If we just remember all of these events happen in this passage right after Jesus, here's the news that his cousin John has been beheaded. 
So mm. you can imagine the thoughts that are wandering into his mind. There's grief, there's sadness. And, and I think probably in the back of his mind, there's the knowledge that he awaits a fairly similar fate, that he's going to die on a cross. And so then the scene starts with the disciples coming back from this amazing ministry time. And then Jesus just calls them away to rest. Um, verse 31 in this passage says that there was constant coming and going. They didn't even have time to eat. So, <laughs> I mean, those of us in ministry, we can sometimes understand what this feels like. And so what Jesus does, they, he calls them away. They hop in a boat. They head out sort of to get away and then find out that people have actually figured out where they're going and have run to meet them on the other side. And so Jesus as he does, he's filled with compassion. He just wanders out into the crowd and teaches. Um, and they're in there the whole day and people get hungry, right? Mm. And the disciples, the bright sparks that they are, they, they tell Jesus to send the crowd away so that they can get food, right? <laughs> Jesus says, you feed them. Um, and I find it fascinating that the disciples, they, they actually do take inventory and then they just bring to Jesus what they find, which is just a few loaves and some fish. And then Jesus makes it work. Um, he takes what's offered and he uses it to feed at least 5,000 people. And there are 12 baskets left over. So I think for this first day, the question that I'm kind of chewing on in this passage is, am I offering what I have to Jesus? And then just waiting for him to meet the needs around me. So taking what I have and providing it back to him to use as he will. That is great. So that's our first helicopter stop called Bread. The second one, uh, let's call this one Boat, and you'll understand why. Um, <laughs> it's just been a long day of hectic meetings in this massive catering that the disciples have just done. And they get into a boat to head to Bethsaida while Jesus goes to pray. And you probably remember this passage. Um, late at night, the guys are fighting the sea. They're trying to get to their destination. And Jesus sees them from the shore and he walks out to them. And then the, the plan is, and this just blows my mind, the plan is that he's going to walk past them to the other side. <laughs> <laughs> this is so hectic. And this is like um, 4 a.m., you know, and the disciples are struggling. They've been a rough day. It's in, in Jesus comes past them. They think he's a ghost. And then they just totally panic and freak out. And the whole scene, it just really makes me laugh when I picture in my mind, what's going on here. <laughs> you can see Jesus just like overtaking the boat while he's walking and then kind of <laughs> heading forward. Um, and the disciples, um, he comes into the boat, he comforts them. And then the sea gets calm just like that. I mean, he just takes chaos and turns it to calm mm. when he comes in. So the question I think for this day for us to think around is, how am I handling the crisis that's before me? Or how are you handling the crisis before you as we navigate COVID and just all the impacts of what's happening? Am I looking for Jesus in the middle of the storm? Mm. I like that. Okay. So that's day two. Our third stop on this journey, so we've done bread, boat. This is called barriers, okay? So we're going to go into this third stop. And this is all about hand washing. And I think, I mean, particularly here in South Africa, we're washing our hands a lot with COVID. I um, feel like sanitizer has become my new body spray. It's just unbelievable. <laughs> um, and the Pharisees here, they have a massive problem. They were so focused on the details of the law that they missed the important things like justice and worship. They interpreted these laws to suit themselves, um, emphasizing things, forgetting the things they didn't like, you know, and, and Jesus calls them out on this. Um, in verse six, he says, these people make a big show of saying the right thing, but their heart just isn't in it. He calls mm -hmm. out these Pharisees for play acting. They were complete hypocrites. And so as I look at this day, the question here for me is, am I living with integrity? Am I consistent in the ways that I act toward Jesus and toward others? Mm -hmm. That's good. So that's like, barriers. barriers. We've got three. We've yeah, got two more three. helicopter stops. Yeah. <laughs> Fourth one is branding. Okay. Branding. I like um, it. 
Jesus spends time teaching in this section, and it's not, he, he says it's not what goes in, but it's what that comes out that's so important. You know, what is the brand that's on display as we're moving around society, as, as the disciples here were moving around? Our hearts are deceitful. <laughs> Scripture teaches us this, right? Our hearts are wicked. If what's on the inside is filthy, that's what's going to show up on the outside as well. Um, disciples, they were pretty slow to get this, but I, I think I put myself in a similar spot sometimes. And a good question for me to chew on in this day is, what are people seeing as the brand of my life? Mm. Do I represent the Jesus that I say I represent? You know, is it, yeah. is it real? Does my inside and outside look the same? Good question. So, day five. Day Here five. Go. Here we go. Our last section this week, it's found in verses 24 to 27 of chapter 7. And this stop, let's call branching out, or as we would say here in South Africa, branching out. Branching out. Got it. Jesus has a mission, right? It's to go to the lost sheep of Israel. That's it. That's his whole mission. And he's a fulfillment of prophecy as the Messiah, and he's been long expected. But we notice in different passages that Jesus is getting pulled out of what his core mission is by Gentiles of great faith. And it's mostly women, right? This is a woman from Syrophoenicia, and she's Greek. And she needs help with her demon-possessed daughter, and she just begs Jesus to cure her daughter. Mm -hmm. Jesus makes this really cryptic response about feeding the children first, and then what's left can feed the dogs, right? And this woman in great faith, just takes this saying and she turns it and says that the dogs get the scraps from the children's table, right? And, and Jesus is so impressed by her response that, I mean, there's no question, he heals her daughter, recognizing her faith, even though she really wasn't part of his primary mission. He came for the house of Israel. Mm. Um, and so I think as we also then finish this section, Jesus talks well, he doesn't talk. He goes to a, a deaf and a mute man, and he just shows such compassion. He pulls this, this guy out of the crowd to a quiet place, right? This guy can't he hear. He can't speak. Jesus pulls him aside where it's quiet, and he prays. He cries out. Um, he puts his fingers, I think, in the man's ear, and then the man can hear and speak perfectly. And this just like creates a massive stir. And I think maybe the questions that I find in, in both of these events um, are, are just like this. Am I willing to get out of my own agenda to meet the needs of those around me? Mm. Has Jesus opened up my ears so that I can hear him clearly mm. um, and follow him clearly? Mm. So that's, that's our helicopter ride, Gail. And I like it. Those are some great questions. I wrote some of them down. I'm going to look at them again. and. And uh, look at them this week. I encourage our viewers and readers to do the same, to, to follow this kind of helicopter uh, mini stops that you're, you're guiding us through this morning. Good. Now uh, that's be fun. And, and maybe they can practice saying bread, boat, barriers, branding, and branching out. So. <laughs> I think I should have had you do that in the beginning 10 times fast. So. <laughs> Well, Tim, this is great, and um, I, I'm going to be sending you uh, one of these. Our guests get uh, an Encounter with God Together mug, and if you're watching along and you want to drink your favorite hot beverage with us, you can also get one <laughs> from our, our store. So um, they're the great mug, and I, I find myself using it a lot. So keep your eyes out for that as it makes its way to, uh, to South Africa. And, Good luck. Uh, Our postal service is, is pretty horrendous, so I may have to wait till I get to the States sometime for it. <laughs> if you want me to send it to a, a U.S. address, I can do that. Okay. Um, I hope uh, thanks, uh, yeah, you will enjoy this week's reading as much as Tim, Tim did, and uh, I'm going to have you back, I'm sure. Oh, thank you, Gail. It's really great to be with you. Good to be with you. Blessings on the beginning of your school year. And can I pray for you guys? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Well, let's pray. Father, we are so grateful for Gail and the Ministry of Scripture Union in the U.S. The challenges there are significant, God, and I just pray that you will use them to reach so many young people this year. 
Um, COVID is bring so, bringing so many challenges, God, and I just ask that you would bust through those challenges, that you'd equip the staff with what they need, help them to raise up partners and churches that will be um, moving into communities of great need, uh, and we just trust you for the results, God. So thank you, um, and just give them real wisdom as they go about their work. In Jesus' name, amen. Same. Amen. Thanks. Have a great day. Rest of your seven you. hours ahead. So you're a little closer to finishing than, than I am. But. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> thanks. Take care, Gail. Bye for now. Bye.